Guys, today is gonna be a good one. And I always say that, but I really mean it. And the reason why is because we just walk you through what's happening here. We just jumped in the helicopter, flew from our shop to this extremely remote location in the Utah mountains. And the reason we're here is because we are gonna rescue an old cat D8 bulldozer that I bought with one stipulation. I had to be able to get it off the mountain and I don't think it runs. The guy that I bought it from says that maybe the final drive's broken, something's wrong with the track system. Really have no idea what to expect. They said it did run when it was parked like 12 years ago. Keep in mind this cat hasn't ran for 10 or 15 years. Now these old D8H dozers are notorious for give them fuel, give them a battery and they'll fire right up. So I'm hoping today we can at least figure out whether it's gonna run, drive, figure out what's going on with the tracks. However, we've got like a solid at least three or four miles of gnarly mountain terrain that we can't get the truck and trailer into, which means we have to bring the dozer out of it. So the plan, we walk you through this. We flew in with the helicopter today. We're meeting Hans and Bud here in a minute with the truck, Ranger, tools, all the stuff that we need to be able to try to get it running. That's today. Then we're gonna fly back to the shop and tomorrow we're gonna come out with another cat dozer, a big D8T. You guys have seen DA dozers, right? Just a little Murphy little montage of dozers for me. Those are D8 dozers. These machines are monsters. Now, the one we're picking up is an older, probably 70s model. This thing weighs, without the blade, somewhere around 50,000 pounds. With the blade, probably close to 60, 70,000 pounds. It doesn't have the blade mounted on it right now, so the plan, if it doesn't drive under its own power, is to hook it to the other D8 and literally just drag it out of these mountains. You guys thought the recovering the excavator off the island was a tricky recovery? That was all just a flat, straight pull. This curvy, windy, gnarly mountain canyons that we're trying to get it out of. This, and I always say this, is going to be the most complicated recovery we've ever done because just the sheer size of this dead weight machine. But buckle up, because either way, it's gonna be exciting and entertaining. Find those are. Murph, if you had to pick, if you were stranded here and you had to survive and you had to pick one of these guys to help keep you alive, would you choose Hunter or Jim? Dang, I don't know. They're both good. Hunter can like manufacture stuff. He's basically like more Jeezy. Uh huh. But then Jim Bob, like, he's straight to the business, get done. Like, let's get the out. I'm trying to go home. So you're picking one. I'm sorry, Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> you just got eliminated. <laughs> it's, in that scenario, it's not a fair question, though, because Jim is the only guy who would keep you alive in that scenario. Yeah, that is true. Hunter I mean, would keep himself alive. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, guys, story time for you. So last week, I was traveling through uh, Costa Rica, Mexico, and a few other countries, and I had the most frustrating experience. I got on my phone, and I went to log on to my online banking because I needed to initiate a wire transfer for a payment that I needed to make. Well, as soon as I went to go log on, my bank kept on kicking me out. I was like, what the crap is going on? Why is it not letting me log in? And then I realized it's because I was in a foreign country and my bank is based here in the United States and it thought that a hacker was trying to log in from somewhere else in the world and get my information. So I appreciate the fact that my bank was protecting me, but I became super frustrated because I couldn't log in. But then I remembered that I have Surfshark VPN on my phone. Surfshark VPN is a virtual private network. And all I had to do was click, bam, connect. And then I was able to choose which country I wanted the internet to think that I was in. So even though I was in Mexico, I said, nope, I'm actually in Utah. Clicked Utah, the location, uh, changed it here on the device. Bam, my online banking let me log right in with no more issues because it didn't think that somebody from a foreign country was trying to log in. You can do this with Netflix to access media content that's not available in different countries. And more importantly, you click this button and all of your browsing becomes private and secure. So if you're on a public Wi-Fi network and there's hackers sitting there waiting for your sensitive details, passwords, banking information, bam. Surfshark VPN covers it all up, encrypts it, and protects you from people accessing that sensitive information and keeps them from stealing your identity. And it's super easy to use. Literally, guys, one click, bam, you're connected and protected. Now, here's the deal. Your old pal Heavy D is going to hook you up. If you click the link in my description below, it's going to take you to the Surfshark website. Use the promo code SPARKS, and it's going to give you 83% off the service, plus three months for free. That's a deal. And, guys, it's a small price to pay for your freaking security, your protection, your privacy. You don't need that sensitive stuff out there in the world. And all you gotta do is bam, click the button and you're connected. Enjoy. You know guys, I, since I'm usually the one that's like, hey, here's the plan, here's what we're gonna do. Um, this is what it's gonna take to get it done. I think today I'm gonna flip the roles here and let Murphy make a plan. Murphy, how are we gonna get this dozer out of here? I don't even know. So I gotta like calculate this. Okay. 
All right, I, I think I have a solution. My brand new F550. Yep, there it is. Coming through the trees. That's fine, just, just drag it through the trees, hands. No big deal. <laughs> that was the middle finger. That's how we know it's hands. Check out my new uh, F550. We got the Bradford built bed on it. We uh, had Hunter build some custom side rails for it. Pretty stoked on that. Big fuel box, which is also a toolbox and a transfer tank. Uh, we got the giant. Everybody laughs at the bumper. Everybody laughs at my bumper choice. I love it. I've wanted one of these for a long time because you can just do anything and hit anything and it's no big deal. We got a Smitty built winch. If any of these GoPros don't work today, yeah! We've got oil, we got hydraulic oil, we got tools, we got batteries. We got fuel. We got a good assortment of stuff here to hopefully see if the dozer will actually run. If we get it running, then we'll be able to figure out whether the tracks function or not. See, my biggest concern is that we'll have to drag it out with the track binding up. That's gonna suck. That's like 60,000 pounds of dead weight just dragging. The same issue that I was concerned about with the excavator on the island, remember? If the track's freewheel, then the other dozer will have no problem pulling it out. A new D8T dozer has a lot of power, so we could probably still pull it out even if the tracks are bound up. This makes things way more complicated, so hope for the best here. Here she is, Cat D8H Dozer, one of the most popular dozers ever built. They built like 50,000 of these things. This is the machine that built America, it built like the Hoover Dam, built all the major highways. Like this is one of the most iconic pieces of equipment you'll ever see. And it's been sitting here for 2012, supposedly. So what, 10 years maybe? Um, and it's what was used to cut all these roads up in here until something happened and nobody really knows exactly what. They say something with the drive, with the track, and I'm seeing that they started doing work on it. Like there's a bunch of stuff kind of like partially removed. So I have no idea what to expect. We're gonna dig into it, but what we gotta do is we, regardless of whether we get it running or not, we have to get it from here, clear down to that valley, through all these winding roads. And that's where the other D8 is gonna come in handy. This is gonna be one hell of a recovery. Put on the ground right there. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna remove this lock using a binder. Nobody knows where the keys are, so we're gonna just try to binder it off. Might be a good idea, might be a terrible idea. Easy enough. See that? Easy. There we go. It dries a bone. You go to the bottom? Yeah. No hydraulic oil. All right, so no hydraulic oil. We got a funnel. Good news is we got buckets of hydraulic oil. I just wanna make sure this is the hydraulic oil tank, which it should be. Here's the plan here. Top off all the fluids. So we're gonna fill the hydraulic oil reservoir. I'll be very honest with you, this is my first time ever working on an old Cat D8. Um, I've been around them, I've just never had to work on them. So you're gonna see me kind of uh, guessing at a lot of stuff today. The nice thing is equipment's equipment, it's pretty much the same. I was gonna pop a hole in it so it vent, but then I realized we gotta use this for fuel, so I'm gonna be patient instead. 10 seconds later. Huh? Coolant? Oh, <laughs> I, I guarantee you I know who's got coolant. Gas stations. <laughs> <laughs> I love gas stations, especially small gas stations that serve steak. I guarantee they serve steak. I bet their hot box is on point. Oh, 100%. <laughs> their hot box has never cooled down since 1983. Somebody started doing a service on this thing, and the owner told me that somebody did come out and try to do a little bit of work on it. 
I don't know if they ever got to the point where they tried to start it. But what's cool about these old cats is, I don't think this one has it anymore, but they used to have a pony motor mounted on top of the engine that was used to start the engine. So a little gas engine, you'd fire it up like a lawnmower engine, and that's what was used to start this engine. See that little tailpipe on the front there? That's what that was for, a little pony motor. Might still have it. It's got an electric starter. Electric starter? Right now, yeah. So they convert them, luckily, they have a conversion to convert it over to electric starter because the pony motor is just a lot of work and didn't really work that well. So instead now it's got a big starter motor, but back in the day, they didn't have starter motor technology that was like big and strong enough to be able to crank a massive engine like this. It's like a 15 liter engine, it's a monster. This is the third bucket, so we're going on 15 gallons of hydraulic oil. And this tank is probably a solid 40 gallon tank. Hydraulic oil is at least now present where before it was empty um, we're going to check the fuel we think the fuel in here might be supposedly it's got a full tank that's like 15 years old and 15 year old diesel never ideal full no. smell it how's it smell not bad a little a little ripe but it is a little ripe these things don't need they don't ask for much this is where the uh, old pony motor used to sit, like a little gasoline lawnmower engine. And that's what was used to actually start these dozers. But now we've got electric battery or electric starter on there, which is nice. I'm seeing some loose connections. Actually, no, I think we're good. So much room for activities with that. Look at all this more space. So much aerobics in here. So many activities. A lot of room in there. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, all right. Next step is we're gonna hook these batteries up. It's a 24 volt battery system. We got two monster uh, heavy equipment batteries here. We have 500 pounds worth of batteries here. <laughs> this, this filter right here. Internal, internal filter. filter. Is that the filter? 522.79. Really? <laughs> wow. All right, let's see if she's got any juice. Ready? All, right. all clear. That is fairly anticlimactic. Um, Go straight to the starter. Let's see. I don't know why that starter switch has got two positions. Is that even the starter switch? Is the question. Where's your try that key down on your left side? That's for the pony motor. You'd think. The starter switch isn't doing anything. So now we got to dig a little deeper and figure Just out. We can jump. Where's that uh, pry bar? That's a lot of power in those batteries. That's nice. That's good. That's good. She spins freely. Over, right? That is nice. I completely welded the end of that screwdriver. <laughs> pull a snap. Got pull, a lifetime warranty. Pull. Let's try this again. Motor turns. That's a good sign. The start switch does not work for some reason. We got to figure out uh, why the wiring doesn't work there, but we can do it with the screwdriver for now. As you can see the key, homemade key is starting to, it's only got a few, few birds left in her. 24 volts on those giant batteries. Turns into a welder real quick. So now we're gonna crack open the fuel line, uh, bleed some old fuel through it. Spraying her with some happy spray. You know, this is acting as it's fuel for right now. But, uh, as you can see here with this date, very limited instructions here. 79 was the last time this uh, here filter was uh, replaced, so we're just gonna take it off. Now our starter switch should work, which means our preheaters, the basically glow plugs, should work. So this is all good. This is this is good stuff right here, guys. Making progress. And we'll just hope the motor's good. Sound good. Hey Murphy, did you ever get back to me on how you would get this out of here? Yeah, so I would uh, hire a guy named Dave Sparks. I'm the guy, huh? And I would tell him, hey, I'm going to give it to you for free. And if he starts it, it's his. There is fuel coming through, which is a good sign, which means the fuel pump is... Ooh. If you were stranded in the middle of nowhere, call it a desert island, middle of the mountains, whatever it is, and you had to choose one of the gang to help you survive or just to be with, who would you choose? Hold on, to survive or to be with? Because... There's two totally different things. Well, you want to survive, don't you? And you also want to enjoy surviving. You want to thrive. 
You want to, yeah, you want to thrive. Here's the deal. Who would you oh, choose? No choose your character, smart. starting with Bud. Choose your character. Or would Monday. you choose Hunter? Choose your character. Or Hans. Pick me. You know you want to. Or Bad Boy. Choose your character. Or Don't let Jim Bob. Choose your character. The Murfin Man. Flip the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Or me. Drop in the comments below, who would you choose to help you survive, thrive, enjoy your time in a bad situation? What that question really was is, give me an ego boost and tell bad boy he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get straight to the point, us. you can do that too. I feel like it's turning over way easier than it should. You think so? I mean, I know some of these big engines will just flutter right to life, but. Give it our go. <laughs> Concerned that it's not trying to start with starting fluid. That leads me to believe that there could be something internally not happy with this engine. I hope not though. Not milky. Decent. You got throttle pulled all the way back. All the way back. So what's that at the bottom? What's what? What this over here? That, yeah. I'm not sure. All <laughs> So the reason why it wouldn't start is it, it's got this big valve down here. Basically, it kind of takes compression off the engine when you have it on the start mode. You spin it, and then once the starter's got her spinning, then you throw the valve over, and that's what gives the engine compression and stuff. It like, probably opens or closes the valves or something. So um, sweet. It runs, but the drive mechanisms are all I feel like they're gummed up. So now we got to figure out what's going on with the linkage, but that's a really good sign. Adding oil to the final drive. <laughs> we just put 20 gallons of oil in the transmission, which is half a lot. That's probably more than half. So hopefully that starts building a little bit of pressure. Pretty much at the bottom line. Yeah, that's a good sign. Hopefully that builds some pressure in the uh, clutches and the pumps in there. So maybe we'll get a little bit of response out of the uh, levers now. is a really good sign.
hot damn you see that we might not i mean i don't want to count my chickens yet because we don't know how far she's going to make it on that bad final drive but we might not need the other dozer to get out of here which is like bittersweet no nope. with you just sweet were you just backing up a little bit yeah, and then it back would, up it would release back, yep I wonder if that track, if it's binding in the final drive or on the yeah. actual, does it look like the track? Oh, that's just sweet, man. If you get out of here with that other dozer, that's just sweet. <laughs> well, it drives and it runs really well. Now we got uh, oil in the transmission. Um, one of this track keeps locking up and that track has no tension in it. So there are, there's obviously something not right with the tracks, but it might not be so bad that we can't drive it to the trailer. I think it's somewhere where it's easier to work on, but basically what we're gonna go do is we're gonna go buy the gas station. Um, buy it? Run the, run the owners out of town, uh, get some water, some antifreeze, um, food. If they don't have food, that gas station is gonna be the biggest disappointment. Why, in my life. why do you think there's food there? Because it's a small town gas station. You guys have talked a lot about it. Like, their experience or is it Jim? I think Jim may have been there once. Don't kill my buzz right now. <laughs> guys, what you looking at? is 100% American deliciousness. Any cafe that looks like this, I guarantee you, is the best food you've ever had. But it's the hardest decision you've ever made. And if it's got John Wayne on the menu, oh. the Duke himself, it's even better. So currently going through the menu here, and uh, not disappointing. Sandwiches, hot hamburger, hot turkey, or hot chicken. You got your entrees, chicken fried steak. Grant, what is ground round? Ground rounds like a beef, just a beef, beef patty, beef, like beef patty steak, like a hamburger mm. steak, isn't it? Barbecue mm -hmm. ribs, eight ounce sirloin. All I'm saying, guys, is buckle up because this is gonna be good. We're about to do small town food review. Whatever, whatever's <laughs> the easiest to start with. Whatever, whatever you recommend. Yeah, bring just bring out, out, out a couple of two or three easy starters. I can't believe you tried to order sirloin steak. Right when the nice lady said, I'm spread real thin today, I got a lot going on, I'm trying to run three different places, and you and are like, give me the sirloin. So fair, fairness. I'm gonna eat them. No. With how fast you made this, I imagine it probably does. So, if thank you. needs to, if it's not good enough, let me know. I mean, it's all right, but yeah. enjoy. Thank you. Seven bites, everybody in those rules. Got to dip the potatoes a little bit. It's wonderful. Fantastic. That was real good. Yep. She killed it. Killed it. And fast. I knew she would. Never doubted it for a second. Special's good with me. Burger's good. He's looking at me drinking my root beer float. I can't. Look away. He looks like a very smile on his face, too. At one point, I heard him say, let's get it on. <laughs> <laughs> with his eyes. Back. How about that lunch break? <laughs> the best lunch big I've had in a Listen, long we came to this town knowing that the gas station would probably be a, a hit. We had no idea it was going to be a home run like that, though. Full-blown, they had a pool lounge, they had the most well-stocked gas station I've ever been to, and then the most delicious restaurant that I've had home-style cooking in a long time. And they had a freaking grease gun. You know if a gas station's got a grease gun, that's a good gas station. So now we're back at the machine. We got grease, we got water, we got antifreeze. We're gonna give her a run for her money. We weren't planning on even making it this far today, so we're gonna go for broke now. The fact that they had a grease gun has just got me all smiles right <laughs> grease now. Guns. What's cool about these old dozers and pretty much all heavy equipment, the track tension is controlled by grease. Cool. So this grease fitting right here, oh, we squirt grease in there, that moves that big rod forward, tensions the tracks. Science. Wow, man. That is gonna be a real, Put a little grease in here in the tension of the track. Just gonna figure out a way to secure these batteries. This track is binding up. We knew it would, but. I just don't know how far we want to push it because eventually it'll get to the point where it locks completely up. Literally 
just trying to drag the blade, snap the chain. Three eighths chain just broke completely in half, which I mean, chain breaks all the time, but that doesn't look like it's that buried. But between the weight and the dirt pushing against it, it don't want to move. Missing the blade end caps too. Little cups. Yeah, little. The blade is buried. That's a big <laughs> blade. You might not be getting it out without the other dozer. So good news is we got the dozer running and moved to here. The bad news is the final drive, I think, is finally done its last drive. Sounds craftsman. Uh, These are all metal shavings <laughs> from a final drive. Who, from a metal pencil. Like I said, did his final drive. Nobody's gonna let me have that joke. You guys are just gonna, it's fine, I'll keep doing it. Yeah. I don't know guys, I think this final drive might have done its final drive. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know guys. I think this might have done its final drive. <laughs> we got the dozer as far as we can get it today without another dozer. This track is completely locked up. The final drive is just it's toast. Day one of getting the D8 out of the mountains is in the books. We got it started. We got it driving a little bit. We found out that the final drive done its final drive it is completely broken. And so now we come back tomorrow with a bigger machine, a newer D8, and we're just gonna drag that thing out of here. I don't know if the video is doing justice for just how gnarly this terrain is, but we've got a solid at least two or three miles of windy, gnarly mountain roads to drag that completely dead machine out. And remember, as we're dragging it, that one track is completely bound up. So it's literally just dragging dead weight out of here. So it's gonna get wild. As we come to a conclusion for today's episode, we ask ourselves so many questions. Find out next time on the next episode. <laughs>